Dre All Day. 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 This is a question that I've been asked uh, many times. I want to make sure I address it specifically in video, which is uh, how old can you be or how old do you need to be to play professional basketball overseas? If you're a certain age, because I've gotten these emails over the years, a player might be 28 and he's like, y'all went into the military or, you know, I played in high school, but I didn't play in college. I was doing other things in my life. Maybe you had a family, maybe you got injured, maybe you just never took basketball seriously. And now you're in your late twenties, you might even be in your thirties and you're thinking about maybe just giving it a shot because you just want to know that you gave it a shot to play pro basketball overseas. The question is, is it possible to make it happen even though you're not the, you know, the prime age of players trying to get jobs overseas? The answer is absolutely it is possible. And I have seen players do this. So I'm not just saying it's possible, like anything is possible, but it's possible in that I have actually seen this happen. One thing that you all have to understand is that overseas basketball is different from the NBA or the G League in one specific way in that most of the time when you play on a team overseas, you're there just for that season, even if that long, you're only there for that season. Most contracts for overseas basketball players are usually one year contracts. Even the best players who play overseas, the, the biggest contracts that I've seen of players playing overseas, even the ones that you might be able to even Google, like Euro League top level league players will be at the most a two year contract. And that's very rare that players get two year contracts. And other times it'll be a one plus one contract. So similar how you might hear about an NBA where the team signs you for one year and then there's an option to pick up the second year. And it might be the team option for the second year. Often, almost every time the team has the option, the team doesn't get a player the option to opt into their contract to stay on the team. That doesn't happen overseas. And also that's only in the NBA. So almost every time a player signs a contract to play overseas the contract is for one year and no more than one year and often it might not even be one year is that if the team is dissatisfied with you or you're dissatisfied with the team or y'all just make a mutual decision to you no know, break up mutual decision it's almost never mutual and you can leave right there in the middle of the contract and the team will release you from your contract they don't have to pay you you don't have to be on that team and you're free you're a free agent to go sign with whoever you want to sign with I'm telling you that to explain to you this and to answer the question that's the subject of this video. Since teams are only signing you for that season, they don't really care that you're 28 or that you're 32 or that you're 25 or whatever age you are. They don't, they don't care about your future. All right? They're not caring about, all right, we because understand in the NBA, a team might sign a young player. Like who's somebody who's young? So some young player is 23 and they're already an all-star. The team will sign that player to a, what is it now, four-year contract. I mean, years ago, it used to be seven-year contract. You can sign this player to this long contract. The reason why you sign a player to a long contract because they're already young. They're only 22. So by the end of the contract, they're still going to be in their prime. So you want to sign them and make sure you keep that player under contract for the duration of their prime so you can get all this great basketball out of that player. That's what they do in the NBA. But overseas, they don't sign players to these long contracts like that. They sign you just for that season. So if you can be good, if you're 33 and you can be good for the team this year, all right, they'll sign you for this year. All right, they don't care that you're going to be 34 next year. You might not be on the team next year. Next year, they might replace you with somebody else. And next year, you might want to go play somewhere else. You might play so well this year when you're 33 that another team wants to give you twice the money in a different league in a different country next year because they saw what you did last year. So it's not, they don't care about how old you are, generally speaking. Now, how your age could affect the team's decision-making process is not about them thinking, oh, how good are you going to be in three years? Because they don't care. You might not be on the team in three years. But the reason why your age may affect the decision is because the team may be looking at you wondering why, all right, well, if this player is 33 and they're good, why weren't they playing when they were 23? Why weren't they playing when they were 25 or 30 or 27? Why weren't they playing all these other years? So they might think there's something wrong with just your game overall, meaning they might think you might not know the game too well, or they might think, let's say you're 33 and you showed you're good enough to play for some team in some league, but they're like, well, this player hasn't played any pro ball since they haven't played any organized ball really since they graduated college or since high school. So it might take them some time to get assimilated to the game over here or to learn the nuances of the game. So we don't have time to go through that. So we're not going to sign them because of that. 
So they might not sign you, not because of your age, the number, but because they might think you don't know the game because you haven't been playing. Or they might think maybe you have some off the court issues. Or they might think maybe this player isn't really into the commitment and that's why they haven't been playing pro ball. Or they might just think if this is your first year playing pro ball and you're 30, they might think, well, this player might need a year of just learning what the pro game is like overseas before they're really ready to be their best. And we don't want to be their breeding. We don't want to be their training ground for a year because some teams might be like this. Like, just think about this. Some teams might only like signing players who have already played professional basketball in Europe because they don't want a player who's just using this first year to learn the European game because there are nuances in the European game that are just similar to anything you would experience in the United States. I don't care what level you played at. The Euro game is different from the NBA game or the D, even the D1 college game. So some teams might only sign players who have experience playing overseas because they want players who already know what it's like and they can hit the ground running. And there are other teams who like signing rookies, players who haven't played pro ball yet, and they like training them and teaching them and bringing them along. Some teams are one way, some teams are another way, and some teams are a little bit of both. So these are all these things that you need to keep in mind that your age could affect a team's decision making process. But just to make sure I'm being clear again, it's not because of they're thinking about, well, you're 35 and you know, you're going to be 40 in five years. They don't care because you, ain't, you probably won't be there anyway. All they care about is what you could do right now. So if you're good enough, if you're 35 and you've been in the military, but you're still in good shape and your knees are in good shape and you feel like you could run and jump and you could maybe help a pro team. I mean, give it a shot and it's a good chance if you can play i mean everything hinges on if you can play okay because we can't go off what people say all right if somebody's just talking everybody's everybody's michael jordan when they talking right but if you can play then look a team will sign you and they'll give you a deal and it might not be as great of a deal as you might have got when you were 25 but it'll be a deal it might not be the opportunity you would have got when you were 21 but it'll be an opportunity and you can definitely play based on and your age is not going to stop a team from signing you if you can play all right i want to make sure i'm saying that so if you can't play i don't care if you're 22 if you can't play you're not getting a deal now if you're 32 and you can't play you're not getting a deal if you can play then a team is going to give you that opportunity. But you got to you know, put yourself out there. You got to do the same thing that everybody else does. Get represented by somebody. Get seen by somebody who is somebody. Make that investment in yourself. Go to those camps. Do what you got to do to get yourself seen. It's not going to just happen like a, a magic trick, like Aladdin, like some genie comes out of a bottle. You got to do the same work that everybody else does. But your age is not going to stop you from getting a deal if you can play. Now, all that being said... If you haven't gotten this book yet, it is called The Overseas Basketball Blueprint. I wrote this book to help you deal with everything that you need to know and do everything you need to do so you could be who you want to be, which is a professional basketball player who is, think about this, you travel the world and get paid to play basketball for a living on somebody else's dime. Like, it's not like you travel in the world and you're paying for your flights and your hotels and staying in hostels and all that, like these you know, travel bloggers, no. You are traveling the world and they're paying for it. They pay for your flight. They pay for the food. They pay you and all you do is play basketball. That's your whole job is to play basketball. Now, listen, there's a lot of people who have seen my videos. I mean, everybody in the world goes to YouTube. If there is a job in the world that is better than playing basketball for a living, somebody tell me what it is. There is no job that is better than playing basketball for a living. So if you're thinking about doing it, if you ever had the, uh, the notion of doing it, and somebody told you that maybe you could do it, and you've been trying to decide whether you should do it, listen, if you can do it, do it. Because there is no experience you will experience in your life that is better than playing basketball for a living. Trust me, at least work-wise. I went to a D3 school. I walked on at a D3 school. Left that D3 school with no connections, no contacts, no game footage, no impressive stats, nothing. And I made a nine-year career playing ball overseas. Now, part of that was that I could play. But the other part of it was that I'm a hustler. And I know how to make things happen for myself. You ain't got to be a hustler like me because I wrote the book. So you don't have to go through all the years of ups and downs and trial and error that I went through. I wrote this book so you don't have to do the trial and error. You can avoid all the trial and error by just reading this book. And let me tell you what's even better. I'm going to give you the book for free. You ain't even got to pay for this. I could charge $100 for this book because of what you want to get out of it. I'm going to give you the book for free. All you got to do is take care of the shipping. Go to balloverseas.com and tell me where to ship this book, and I got you. The link is down there in the video description. Or, and, not or, but and, I also got a free downloadable PDF that you can download to your phone right now. Not now, but right now. 
by is another link down there. It's called 46 Things You Need to Know About Playing Ball Overseas. Download that right now. Order this right, order this, and you'll be getting this soon in the mail. Download that PDF and you'll get it immediately, like today, immediately. And stay tuned to these videos because I got a whole bunch more coming. I'm gonna tell you about everything you need to know about playing ball overseas. I already put out a bunch. So if you haven't seen the other 50 videos I made about overseas ball, literally 50, make sure you go, I think it's over there, related videos or see my whole playlist. It's called Overseas Pro Basketball. Watch all those videos so you got all the information. Get this book so you got more of the information. Get that download so you got more of the information. Listen, if you don't play ball overseas, it's gonna be one of two reasons. Either one, you just can't play, or two, you just didn't get the information. But I'm giving you all the game that you need. I'm giving it to you. I'm giving you all of the game through my books, through my videos, through my articles. I got you. I, I got you covered because I know what it was like when I was trying to get on. I don't want you to have to go through that. That's why I did this. Hove did that, so hopefully you ain't got to go through that. Go to balloverseas.com, get the book, get the downloadable guide, subscribe to me, stay tuned because I got a whole lot more coming for you to work on your game. My name is Dre All Day. Be ready for the next video.